Hey everybody, Ray Gano here. You're watching PZTV and I am really glad to bring to you a friend of mine that I met back in Dallas. Uh, in fact, this last year we, we saw him the year prior, but we really didn't connect too much. But this year it was just kind of a, a divine appointment in a sense and a uh, very wonderful gentleman. We got to really know him really well and you know, from time to time we sit and pop and talk to each other and but he's across the pond. He's over there in London, England. His name is Mark Sutherland. And I wanted to bring to you here Mark Sutherland, fresh from London. Hey, Mark, how you doing? I'm right. I'm doing very well, Ray. Lovely to see you, sir. <laughs> and thank you. How are you? Doing awesome, bro. Doing awesome. How's life over there? How's things going? <laughs> well, as, as, uh, as I constantly use that, that word of mine, which I overuse, we are in very, very, very interesting times, mm -hmm. to say the least. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think as we constantly discuss, that you could say exactly the same on your side of the pond oh, yeah. as we are saying on this side of the pond. The uh, the the spiritual battle that um, manifests itself on Earth politically is absolutely raging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um... Things are, it's been interesting because we've been seeing a lot of things heating up over there in, in your neck of the woods. Um, recently, London was named the murder capital of the world. And yet a lot of you guys over there and in the UK and a lot of places all over the world look at us like we're the crazy Americans with all the guns. Well, mm. if I remember right, you guys don't have any guns or anything like that. So how are you guys becoming the murder capital of the world? Well, it's not a title that I'm particularly think oh, is is wonderful. I think it's extremely, extremely sad. And you raise a very good point because, you know, Giuliani didn't he? He tackled the uh, the New York murder rate um, uh, incredibly by putting you know a New York cop on on every single street and also halfway down each street in between the next street as well, mm -hmm. and uh, and lowered that. And um, it's extremely sad. We are seeing a a massive rise in uh, in knife crime. Um, there was last I think last Friday there someone actually took a, a machine gun to the streets of oh my uh, of, so, of, so, of London. So um, where are they finding machine guns in London? I, I, aren't guns against the law there? Well, uh, <laughs> of course, and I'm uh, I'm fully aware as as you and I have uh, had con had conversations a little briefly, and I'm constantly having discussions with other dear friends across the pond about the fact that you've got a First Amendment and you have a Second Amendment to defend the First Amendment, and you have a right to bear arms against a tyrannical government, and all the issues of all the quite rightly of what Washington uh, George Washington laid out in regard to a militia being able to be a citizenry being able to be armed and uh, also to carry ammunition together um, no we I think by 1925 we had officially got rid of that mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm very sad about it I think I can only I can only in the end discuss it in in spiritual terms right mm -hmm. in spiritual terms of what we then allow going on within our within our country we of course we live in a society we live in a world that wants to completely deny the the spiritual realms the consequences of yeah. that of what is happening in and i don't as i constantly say i don't sit here as a theological expert but the fact that we want to deny what's happening in the third heaven and how that manifests in in the second heaven and as a nation as much as this is not popular to say I I just see we just see to me we don't seem to be blessed at the moment we're not moving we're not you know moving our embassy to to Jerusalem we're not following you know as Genesis 12 says if you uh, if you bless my uh, my people I will bless you if you curse my people I will curse you and in other words we are moving away from from scripture right so this is manifesting and also um I mean, stop and stop and search laws, which are, I mean, I privileged to have co-produced and designed a feature film called in 2010 that hit the BBC about a very well-known play about this issue. But stop and search. Um, people don't want that. They're then concerned about well, the, the mayor, you know, of London said that concerned about profiling and all this, all this kind of thing. Well, maybe that would 
you know, stop lives. We had an incident, and, and I won't say where I am, but not too far away from me, where sadly a car driver cut a cyclist up. And the cyclist then responded by getting out the biggest sort of machete on the streets of London that I have ever seen. And it was captivated with a, it was captured with a webcam and all the rest. And then this guy started attacking the car. So it's, it's sp spiritual manifestation of behavior. You know, let, let's just say that. Let's say that. I mean, of course, people just go, no. And then again, it's like the people of God, you know, we need to be engaging in these things. Um, on your side of the pond, and, and I've mentioned it a number of times, uh, talking to others, you've got people like Wynne Worley and his teaching. You've got Frank Hammond and their teaching where they're talking about, you know, binding binding spirits in the name of Jesus, etc., and talking about the spiritual warfare. And I know that's something that is profoundly uh, close to your your heart as well, sir. So, you know, this is this is what this is what is going on. Um, I just feel it's a total manifestation of the spiritual battle. And I'm extremely sad about any of the injuries that are going on, etc. Um, you know, when we have an incident, I think in uh, in West London, where um, a maybe slightly different, but a man went in and even stabbing a one-year-old child um, that was hit. His. I mean, this is extremely sad that the amount of angst and anger in these people and how that is then that is then uh, manifesting. Well, it's it's interesting too. Um, do you do you see it possibly <clears throat> being, you know, because because now you have a Muslim mayor there mm. in London, and and you've as much as I hate to call it this, but it, London is almost turned into London stand, and I mean it, it seems like there's a rather and, and again maybe I'm profiling or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it just seems to me that whenever there's a large enclave of, of, of Muslims or Islamic faith or something like that, bad things happen. Is, is this something that you've seen? I mean, you know, or, or what, do you, what do you see going on over there? Well, first of all, I say just let's go for the difficult questions. Um, <laughs> um, uh, the, wonderful Melanie, the wonderful Melanie Phillips wrote a book called, uh, a few years ago called London Stone. Mm -hmm. And she talked about the fact, I mean, if, if you then, so let, let's go to geopol geopolitics. Um, Morsi then took over as uh, the M Muslim Brotherhood, then took over as the leader of Egypt. A few years later, um, uh, General Azizi came in and threw him out. The family, or connecting with uh, Morsi, I think, and others, et al in regard to that previous uh, administration then found themselves in london there is a number of things like that and i certain things i'm investigating it and also the muslim brotherhood etc i don't have to tell you about them especially with um act for america and the amazing work that bridget does on your side of the pond and others um yes there is a concern we we then so Within the, within the conspines of if particular people are following um, Islam, Islamism, then sometimes the outworking of that is not particularly very helpful if they are taking the jihadist view of, of their book, of the Quran, and acting out. That, that, can't be, that can't be denied. That has to be talked about. That has to be said. The problem is... Is that if you then are, as it's been very, very clever on the left for many, many years, to then taint you as being some kind of racist, bigoted Nazi, right? I find it really interesting, Ray. I mean, this has to be said, that in regard to the left, their talk about rights for this group, rights for that group, etc., etc., and then ardent feminism and all the rest. But are they then seem to be happy with Sharia law and members of of uh, of our you know in, in regard to women in regard to they want women's rights quite rightly but they will not challenge that and as you have seen on your side of the pond with that woman sansor i've forgotten her name you know who says i'm an american i'm uh, i'm a muslim I, and bloody blah, blah but there is a and then it's all left-wing agitation again spirit spirits 
and we need to be binding the uh the spirits that are that are coming in you know the bible talks about that here we are as christians we're not um apologizing for that at all so ephesians 6 makes it very clear that we are in we're not fighting against flesh and blood but principalities and powers you are the person that teaches on that um you know this is the battle that we are that we are in and there are you know the let's let's be frank uh, let's just say this so i think next week i could be wrong i need to check the diary but they have what's called the the el quds march where suddenly we will see um flat hamas flags walking through london now spiritually the it has to be said the consequences of that right now people watching this who would profoundly disagree here we go the exocet missiles start coming in and have a go for being critic critic of that and all the rest i want to say you know we believe that jesus said i am the way the truth and life no one gets the father except through me we only we believe that and we want anyone who follows any other faith to become christians we passionately believe that we only believe that is the way that there is only one way and um, other people in trying to create a utopian vision on earth and we'll come to that in regard to the archbishop of canterbury's comments over the last uh, 24 hours um you know it's wrong it's wrong and that's what progressivism marxism marxism cultural marxism wants to bring in and cultural marxism and and the left wing are using islam in my opinion to to crush to quiet um to potentially say it's irrelevant the judeo-christian heritage of our nation and the judeo-christian heritage of your nation now are we saying that all, all all muslims are violent or behave in a particular way no we're not saying that what we are saying is that if we see marches going through london saying death to america death to the uk we want sharia law in the uk um we need to have a responsible discussion about this unfortunately people like melanie phillips try and create that discussion fortunately people like douglas murray create try and create that discussion fortunately papers uh, magazines like standpoint the spectator try and create that discussion and we have to have that discussion that discussion is happening it need more it needs to happen because what happens is you then create a pressure cooker and if you don't allow that discussion then you wonder why individuals would then go to what people would call extreme political ends and let's just let's just say something certain individuals are so quick about going you know you're a nazi for saying this well the clue is this nazi is national socialism the clue is in socialism yeah. communism yeah. socialism yeah. communism so yeah. what what would then happen is that through one group we then say we then go for it through uh, through violence uh, the other group would turn around and say well we gently in time we're taking over each individual established uh, thing of that particular country and we and we bury it from from uh, the inside as Dinesh D'Souza I think recently uh, a few weeks ago in a, in a wonderful presentation explained I think that when um, when uh, uh, flip, uh, totally forgotten uh, his uh, his name the the fascist leader of Italy uh, then Mussolini uh, Mussolini then took over thank you um, I think it was maybe Uncle Joe Stalin that sent him a telegram to congratulate him yep yep in other words I'm not going off the subject what I'm saying is and I said this i've said this to you i don't ask people to agree with me i just ask them to go and do the research so we can come back and have a really really good agreeable conversation and discourse where we can agree to disagree but we need to discuss these issues yeah. this is a very great concern sorry that's a maybe a long-winded oh, oh. and i uh, can't uh trying to find it i have i normally have i normally have my little copy of the American Constitution 
to just wave up and just remind <laughs> people and just say, oh, I can't quite find it on my desk, um, just to remind people of fundamentally why the Constitution is so important, yeah. why you are a constitutional republic. And, and I yeah. would say this, I'll just put this in now for anyone, anyone who uh, we have the privilege to watch it on your side of the pond right now and in the future. That to be praying for your uh, midterm elections, this is vital. And the fact that you, um, I mean, Richard Dreyfus, the actor, has started a society uh, to get civics and and you know and about the constitution taught in schools. The fact that they've backed off from that since 1975, and and there's suddenly become this massive progressive love it. You know, you could, you and I could sit here. We could go through the previous administrations. Um, we could go through the previous presidents, the 44th presidents' um, political leanings. We could give everyone a history lesson. The problem is again that, in regard to the propaganda of the press, the way things are controlled, people don't believe us. But the evidence is is there. So your your constitution is is so so important we are a democracy aha uh -huh. you and that's questionable and you are a constitutional uh, republic so going back to your question i think they're the same i you know i may have not have said that because i've swallowed the history swallowed history in the past but i am beginning to see that they are the same you are wanting um, the constitution doesn't stand for progressivism it's individual rights you know, yep. um, under God, and this this is it. This is this is the whole point. We don't understand that. We have lost sight of uh, of of late of the Reformation. We have lost sight of why the Puritans got into the Mayflower, etc., came over um, to to America. And I um, find it really interesting. Someone was pointing this out. It might have been Dick, Dick Morris of Dick Morris TV, where he's mm -hmm. revealing fantastic political insight into your side yeah. of the pond. And he talked about um, the two groups landing in America. One may be not, maybe more of a sort of from the common people, and one having royal, royal links back in 1776. It wasn't my, it wasn't my fault. I just want to say that. Um, so. That was fascinating in how America then, you know, went from that point. But it's understanding why the Puritans left the whole thing of being able to exercise the faith, uh, read, read scripture for themselves, etc. Um, my concern is it seems as though we're, we're heading for the Reformation and that we're not burning each other at the stake at the moment, but we are seeing the brown shirts come out in regard, in regard to how um, things are portrayed on social media. You are, you know, you and other dear friends of mine on your side of the pond, we're, you're being censored. We're being censored. We're being censored on Facebook. We're being Twitter banned. We're being, uh, you know, uh, YouTube, the hits are being cut down, demonetization and all this. Because these companies are of the left and people need to understand and do more investigation into how these these corporations are working yeah. so yes they are all part of this progressive manipulation mm -hmm. well i've been writing a bunch of articles recently and what i've been trying to point out is the luciferian aspects of it these people are they have clearly chosen a side and mm -hmm. for example hillary <clears throat> hillary clinton I mean, she has clearly chosen a side. She's, she has chosen to serve Lucifer. Uh, I strongly believe the Bush family, they have chosen to serve Lucifer. Uh, the Clinton family, chosen to serve Lucifer. And, and, and then many others. There's you know a lot of the power brokers and corporate leaders and, and everything like that. They have chosen to serve Lucifer. And I, I find it interesting that, you know, even on your side of the pond, you've got folks over there that are in i hate saying in league with the devil but that's basically basically what's happening and and everything and unless we get up and start saying something about it and start you know exposing it and shining the light upon it it's just going to get worse now um an, an interesting thing happened over there and it's actually kind of shaking the world a bit is this this tommy robinson 
and and him getting arrested and and basically having all his rights stripped away and anything and and here this guy what he was doing was was protesting you know muslims and and stuff like that and yet he's the one who's getting arrested and 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 stuff can you can you kind of give us a report a little bit or tell us about what's going on with that and you know maybe some background or a short background and everything well the other the thing is again we unfortunately we have to be careful in regard to according to what we can say and what we can't report so let's just go back to history um andrew knight um a wonderful uh, journalist and uh, is it andrew knight no it's andrew norfolk i think i fortunately i've got his name right i keep getting that wrong who was who used to write or maybe even still does for the times so in 2010 he uh, he records this on youtube there's a wonderful youtube clip where he's giving this speech for uh, 25 minutes explaining this he was driving through scotland heard about another a, a case in regard to grooming of children by a particular background racial profiling of certain group of people and he was hearing this case and it was being explained to him it was a case that happened uh, at leeds i think in uh, in 2010 and the person wouldn't talk about uh, maybe who was doing this and he said well i think i do know so he then went to London and he's the editor of the Times said, right, um, I want you to investigate all the child grooming. Um, I want you to keep going until all your fellow uh, colleagues are going to get so sick of the fact that you are then all it is is another case and another case and another case. This is all documented. And this is in regard to Rotherham, where I think 1,400 children, young people were affected by this behavior. So he uncovered all this, and by 2012, um, there were no doubt about it, uh, articles regularly in the Times on a regular basis. By 2013, the head of the Rotherham Council then admitted at a parliamentary, just hear that, that's in the House of Westminster, at a parliamentary select committee explaining um, that they had to, in, they started investigating, uh, not to find out and find people to prosecute in regard to child grooming. It was the fact that they needed to find out and investigate who was leaking all this information. Because Andrew talks about the fact that one day he met in a car park and a box of material was handed to him to put in the boot or the trunk, as you say, of his automobile. And then he went off with all this information. The fact that this man said we had to do an investigation because the times kept pushing us, kept exposing now, in regard to uh, Tommy Robinson, yes, you are right. Tommy Robinson was was arrested um, for live streaming. He was arrested for breach of the peace, and he has then been given a 13-month sentence because he had a suspended sentence. That's all right now, I will say. But what I will say is this, is that the D notice was put on it on the friday that he was arrested the d notice was then released on the tuesday and the the issue is and i have had a letter from my member of parliament about this the issue is is saying that because of what he was live streaming could have prejudiced the actual court case that was going on as far as i'm concerned he didn't name any of the people that have come forward for witnesses or anything like that so we'll leave it like that but the establishment in my opinion i i've said it publicly once i'll say it again i may not agree with everything he does but i respect the man and there is a history here of the establishment um i think coming against him and all the rest now and that is continuing some people would say the way he conducts things because he you know, started the English Defence League, which he then, and I'm not here to defend him or anything like that, but as he has said, I left that, and understandably, on few, on fringes of that group, the neo-Nazi, racist, and all the rest, and he spent time trying to kick those people out, and then, you know, and he left that group. Majid Nawaz, who is uh, on a, um, a radio station, LBC, and part of a, uh, a group called Quillam, was also... Um, dialoguing with him about leading leading the uh, edl 
Um, uh, Moaz is a very interesting character because he at one point was a jihadist terrorist and found himself in a prison cell in Egypt. Um, the foundation of Quillam is named after the first, I think, man that converted to Islam in a sense and as part of the establishment within this country. That's another, that's another subject. Um, Majid would love to see the reformation of Islam along with that well-known uh, imam in Australia who's doing whatever he can, where, you know, on these issues. So, yes, uh, Tommy Robinson has been arrested as a 13-month sentence. Um, but it's looking at the build-up to that, Ray, of why someone, why a working-class lad has reacted in the way that he has in regard to wanting to point out what was happening in his uh, community and the concern is by being I mean he was he was put in prison for three months and found himself in a situation amongst other group of people other prisoners who are following in Islam and that would want to do him harm that's the concern I have right right now and I hope that that doesn't happen um, at all um, it has been it is public knowledge in the fact that there is a YouTube video where, um, you know, Lord Pearson of UKIP has uh, has contacted the Home Secretary to say that if anything happens to Tommy Robinson while in prison, then he will be held accountable. The fact is, is that the British government must have worked out, and this is where it's interesting, it is interesting in regard to certain aspects of British law, you're either on this case, but the because it's about uh, bringing the court into contempt. But the, but the, uh, the issue is, is that suddenly it seems you, you can then bang to rights him up very, very quickly. But in regard to wanting to find out what has gone on in places like Rotherham and Telford and maybe other cities up and down this country, it seems a very, very long time to actually do that because politically correctness is saying that you are having a go at a particular group of people. Well, sadly, if they have a particular Asian but Asian background that maybe that are from uh, from Pakistan, there are maybe from Pakistan. Yes, if there are certain acts that are then going on, that 84 to 86 percent of those types of crimes are then done by those particular individuals, as Melanie Phillips has called out in the past on this issue. So we are. St this is appalling. I don't want this to happen at all. This is appalling. We cannot tolerate. We cannot tolerate this. We cannot tolerate child grooming and thinking that this is an acceptable way to behave. It is not. And I think what has happened, again, like I was referring earlier, is that we need to have a grown up conversation about this, e.g., e.g., the fact that suddenly I think that there is a Democrat candidate uh, running maybe uh, on your side of the pond. I don't know whether it's in Virginia, who then thinks that, uh, you know, paedophilia is acceptable. It is not acceptable. This is outrageous. And what we are finding and a push, and you will note that I will be very careful on what we then, that we then go in. The point is this, is that if you, if we're finding ourselves having a discussion to think that this kind of thing is acceptable, this is not acceptable. And on your side of the pond and having watched her excellent youtube today is that people like liz krogan who are doing incredible work on your side of the pond to expose the the, the pedophilia rings this kind of disgusting behavior and the reason why and, and and all credit to her and she constantly needs needs our prayers the reason why people are so shocked by this is because they can't believe that people would want to do this and then they can't believe that there could be a push to legitimize this kind of this kind of behavior um i'm not sure where it was it was very recent on your side of the pond uh where there was um a, a vote to stop uh bestiality 
I do apologize that we're even discussing these things. Oh, no, not at all. And, and the fact that to a vote to stop bestiality, mm -hmm. the, it went through by maybe eight votes to three. The question should be is, or maybe it was eight votes to, to or ten votes to two. I can't remember, and I'm trying to think of where it was. You know, the question should be is, the people voting for this, the two or three people voting for this, what the heck are you on? What, yeah. what is this about? Yeah. And 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 we see. Um, I'm not the historian, but if we go back to, and I do want to come back to this, uh, we discuss what the Archbishop of Canterbury said. Um, if we go back to the Roman Empire, right? You know, why why did it begin to fall and totally go inverse? Is that because? Some of, Some of this behavior, this behavior was then allowed, was thought that this is an acceptable way to behave. Mm -hmm. I think so. And this, and this is abominable. Yeah. And, the, and the reason why um, Liz's work and others is so, so crucial on this is because it goes, and we won't mention names, but it goes all the way to the top. And we just, we just wonder what what else is 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 is, is going on so you when you were talking about families yes the key thing is over here we have such a within the establishment we have masonry we have the masons would you have that on your side of the pond um we then have and i've talked about this we then had the um we have the left-wing equivalent of what's called common common purpose where, you know, you know suddenly, suddenly we find, find people, people in jobs, jobs etc., uh, because they're because a member of this elitist, 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 elitist club. club. They run, they run uh, you know, uh, management, management training, training schemes. schemes. And, and it's, it's like creating, creating el elitist, elitist to then, then run run, run uh, a future, future uh, utopian uh, dream of the European uh, Union. Uh, for our can I, can I ask you a question? Here yeah. in, for example, here in the United States, we have something like the um, Bohemian Grove. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then some of the other things that take place over there in England. Do you have anything like that? Um, you know, an, an almost an open elitist secret society group. Besides well, Freemasons. I mean, everybody, yeah, yeah. you know, everybody knows the Freemasons and the Freemasons have basically kind of opened their doors so much and, you know, you know, but it, but things have gotten more nefarious in in other groups and, and things. You know, over here we have Skull and Bones, which is in Yale. We have I forget the other group that's uh, Marion, Mar you know, part of the other University of Marion Roberts or whatever that other university is, and and then Bohemian Grove and and then you know whatever other you know. Well, the the, the 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 key the key thing is the key thing is is that. You know, we have, we have, we have witchcraft have here, 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 right? Mm -hmm. right. Of that there, there is no doubt in various yeah. uh, parts, of the, parts of the country. Um, um, there was a, uh, uh, there was a book uh, written, uh, written uh, called, uh, called uh, the, trumpet the Trumpet Sounds, Sounds for Britain. Britain. And it's three, three, three volumes. volumes. I have the book. Um, um, and in the and book, in the book they, talk they talk about, um, um, it talks about the concerns of satanic rituals playing out at a particular university. Which I won't name, but, but that, that he concerned about that. that. Now, what it now, what pointed, pointed to, to again, it points to our earlier really discussion, discussion that within that within, um, within church, church leaders, leaders, you know, there's you know, also we've, we've all because um, a friend of mine has been, been on on the edge of this. this. You know, we you talk, talk about, about uh, within, within the Catholic Church, they go on about you know exorcism and all the rest, and and people here within within certain denominations who are committed Christians who are expert on those on those issues all those kinds of things have been denied have been pushed back right um, that's why the whole row about the EU is is so important and I see it in in it is a spiritual battle and you see it in terms because in you know in a don't want to slightly go off but i just want to make a point that if you if you then enter a group that is atheistic and humanistic and doesn't recognize god then you know what 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 does that mean so when you go to um and we just wonder what some of those people get up to if you go to if you say are there certain societies 
I can't point and say, yes, there's that society, there's that society. However, our establishment is full of of, of masonry, of, of that handshake of people protecting each other's back and all this, and this kind of, and this kind of club, which is manipulation, and, min, and, and manipulation is witchcraft. Um, but we're not, the fact that as a church within this country, the established church, you know, you're denying all that. You're denying, as we've said, the unseen, the unseen realm. Um, you've got, but then again, we will have, we will have Davos, right? And we'll have people going to Davos. We'll have people going to uh, groups like this. Then there's the Bilderberg as well. We'll have our politicians going to that, make, which is a secret society. Um, People suddenly go, well, what do you mean you're going on about Davos? You know, it's all on the BBC News. Yes, well, there's a lot of things on the BBC News, but it doesn't mean that proper investigation has gone on. People making handshakes, people uh, making deals, picking people uh, making conversations. If you look at how, you know, the recent Davos thing where, where Soros is going on about the fact that Donald Trump is in the way of, uh, of globalism and the new world order. Well, good and tough, Mr. George Soros. Um, um, so, so there is there all is those, those I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, say well actually well, yeah actually, we've got yeah, the we've Bilderberg got, we've got secret, secret societies, societies mm -hmm. along along those lines, lines, lines but our mm -hmm. politicians etc have attended them yeah okay okay um, let's see here well you've been wanting to talk about the Archbishop and and what he did to be honest, I I have not been paying attention to UK news, so I don't know what he did. So what did he do? Well, it's very it's very inter it's very interesting. I mean, one thing to explain to you guys on your side of the pond is that the archbishops in the house, you know, bishops sit. They sit in the House of Lords. So we have two houses. So where our members of Parliament are, who who. Uh, who create the legislation, right? So it's like the Congress and the Senate who are, who are create the legislation and then they pass it to the House of Lords for them to read and maybe give some of their, they're supposed to be a group of wise men and women giving their wisdom. I've begun over the last uh, number of months since Brexit to really question their wisdom. So now let's can just, I butt in real quickly. So you would say Parliament is more of the common man and then the House of Lords are more of the people who have had titles or do have titles or landowners or the royalty of, quote, unquote, uh, the upper echelon and everything. Very, it's very interesting. One of the reasons one of the reasons I, I, I'm smirking is that in many ways I would love to say that maybe the member, members of parliament are more of the more of the common man. I could name certain individual MPs that I would say yes. But actually, by when I think of a load of MPs, if they've done, if they've done uh, the uh, uh, various certain degrees, um, whether that's uh, philosophy, politics, or psychology or whatever and then uh, they've never had a real job in their life and they then become a researcher for another politician and then they go from that researcher to standing as member of parliament in a constituency and then they become an MP they have no idea about running a business or, or anything they have no idea about what it's like for the average person um, where you would say in Main Street, we would, we which is a number of our congressmen are, are that precisely, way too. Precisely, precisely, and the fact they're that, all lawyers. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're all lawyers, and they're virtually. Um, that's why uh, President Trump has been talking about term limits because they're permanently, they're permanently yeah. in there. That's all they've known. And what's very interesting on your side of the pond, they go in with X amount of money, and they seem to come out as multimillionaires. Um, you know, this is rather or the connection if you need X amount of money to run. So, in one sense, yes, traditionally, maybe we could say that, and yes, it is title, and then what happens is, is that prime ministers can put, uh, as, you know, in the, in the honours list, they can make people lords and stuff like that to stuff it in there with people that would then uh, vote for them. So, the bishops sit in there. Now, this particular archbishop said... Um, and I, I may have to quickly go to an article. Uh, I don't know. He said yesterday, sorry, I won't do that again. He then said that um, 
uh, something like you know the the EU is the, the greatest thing that has been done over the last 1500 years um, I was sent this uh, last night by a very very dear friend of mine which sent me into an apoplectic rage um, the the fact is the fact is is that he is now being criticised because, in many ways, should be staying out of certain aspects of politics. But he's written a he's written a book and all the rest. He basically um, it's very interesting because I think uh, um, Karl uh, Tiegrib talks about has talked about this today in regard to has religion been used as a progressive as a progressive tool? Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. Cultural Marxism has invaded the church. It, it, the gospel, oh, the gospel isn't working. We can't preach that. We want to be lovely. We want to invade with the local culture. Oh, we take cultural Marxism in. So the um, the Frankfurt School, from leaving Frankfurt, coming over to the university in America, has certainly come over here and has invaded. And then if we look at um, if we look at things like liberation theology and stuff like that in South America, it's Marxist based. Yeah. Right. So to me, he's just embraced that. And then an article that's come out today is absolutely uh, giving him a good kicking from the Daily Telegraph today, uh, today um, to say that he has, you know, he should just keep his gob shut and shouldn't, and shouldn't interfere. Um, there was an incident at the uh, at General Synod last summer in regard to someone that I know from Christian Concern for the Nation, Andrea uh, Williamson, who was talking about, Andrea um, was talking about um, the Bible saying, well, the word says this, and then suddenly the Duke of York going, it's the word, the word, the word, we've had enough of the word. Now hear me, it doesn't mean that every single Anglican within the Anglican Church agrees with you know the politicization that's going on i know that they don't because some of them are friends of mine if we then look at i wish i maybe hopefully have the joy, the privilege to interview him one day if we look at people like gavin ashington etc etc who were the chaplain to the queen who resigned because of the direction of what is going on and and, and wonderfully getting on youtube things called anglican unscripted and all the rest i'm in touch with various people who just go where is the gospel in this and the eu is some kind of utopian utopian socialist loving let's just let's just make this very 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 plain right the fact is is that in 1973 so in 1972, the then Prime Minister of this country, Ted Heath, put in the manifesto, in a small little paragraph, the manifesto that said, if I win the election, I will take us into the EU. This was a plan formulated from 1958, I would say, I'm not a historian, but it's just thinking about these things, that from 1957, when we had the Suez uh, crisis, which didn't pan out very well, because we had a little fracar with you lot on the other side of the pond politically over that and our involvement and basically pulled out so in 1958 i think we could say that wilson sorry uh, macmillan and heath were then planning to take us into the european union we were turned down in 1961 and uh, we were then turned down uh, we then were turned down uh, in 19, by Charles de Gaulle in 1968, who very famously turned around and said, why do you want to trade with us when you trade with the West of the world? That's a big hint. The single market is the single market of those European countries. That is what the single market is. It's not the rest of the world. So in 1973, Heath, Heath, uh, oh, 1972, Heath won the election and we were then taken in to what we thought was the common market, e.g. that we would be trading with six other founding members of the European, of the common market as it was then, not the European Union. And it was not political union. Political union came about in 2010 and no one was ever asked about this. 
Now, this is a sort of a quick history. Two experts who have written a wonderful book called The History of Europe and the Great Deception, Christopher North and uh, and um, uh, Richard North, rather, and Christopher Booker, sorry, which I've had the privilege to interview and film. They wrote a book called The History of Europe and the Great Deception. It is a deception. It is a total and utter deception. You have had, you have the same deception on your side of the pond in regard to constitutional government and your constitution playing out and we've just hinted at this in regard to the fact that all these congressmen men and women go in there they're there for years and years and years and years and there is no uh, understanding or they do not want they think that the constitution is a living breathing document that you can change no right so we we lost this is the argument. This is why I am passionate about it. It's about sovereignty and democracy. And we lost our sovereignty and democracy in 1973. And everyone goes, oh, no, 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 no. Yes, we did. So 17 million, 410,725 people or whatever, maybe the other way around, I always get that wrong, voted with a majority of over a million out. And what we are finding now is that every single establishment figure, where they can, it seems, including the the great, I want a, uh, you know, some kind of utopia loving, um, including the Archbishop of Canterbury, what he doesn't realise is that the EU is falling apart. The EU may actually disintegrate before we actually leave. And what we have found, as you have found, and this is my opinion, doesn't make me very popular on this side of the pond, but you have found the fact that, you know, the president, as Trump, as he was, and when he was uh, Donald Trump in the running up to the election, he would turn around and say, when I get to Washington, we have to drain the swamp, we have to drain the swamp, we have to drain the swamp. Whether that's happening quickly, is is another issue because there are lots of frustrations for you guys on your side of the pond it then showed us that we have a massive swamp and it was a quite a you know it's been quite an eye-opener when we see the the vast majority of our mps and the vast majority of the people in the house of lords do not want us to have a brexit we've now as the labor party have just re realized they want to stay like in a in a single market where like Denmark do and buy in um, or Norway rather buy in they then want us to be under the uh, judicial laws of of the European court no thank you right now out as as David Cameron gave us he said well, I'm giving you asking a simple question are you wanting to stay in or are you wanting to leave whatever happens if you vote leave that's it we're going well you wouldn't believe this the way that the mps are behaving the way that the whole the mainstream media the fact that george soros has put in 2.4 million pound into best for britain and it may even go up to 5.4 million pound in the past we've had gina miller leading uh, court cases we've had various things um, and trying to stop this we now have mps saying well we want to have a vote on the that? deal the presidential race on your side of the pond the electoral college votes were run were won decisively by president trump that was what america has voted for that needs to be respected for every, everyone else around the world and it's a bit like us we have voted to leave but they are doing whatever they can to undermine that democratic decision and, and haven't people sort of woken up to this because it's all very well these supposed Christians who want progressivism. Haven't they worked out that under democide in regard to communism and all the rest that the group of people that are not particularly liked other than um, sadly within fascism, uh, known with fascism, well, and, and, and within Russia is that you are then sadly uh, killing, killing Jewish, Jewish people or persecuting the Jews. You are then persecuting and killing Christians. And haven't people begun to work that out? And it seems it seems no, because they've, what they've done, their theology says, we want to create heaven on earth, right? We want to create that through man's man's efforts. 
Well, the Bible is very clear. Nimrod started, and look what God did. Mm -hmm. And even though various people refute this, the building is based on, to me, the Tower of Babel, and is behaving like that. And people in 1972 did not vote to join a political union of 26 unelected commissioners telling us what to do, etc., and overruling. We didn't do that. In 1776, you had, you know, taxation without representation. That is how we, that's how I feel. We have taxation without proper representation. So we're going to have the sovereignty and democracy back. And I will say to you, that doesn't make me popular within, amongst certain friends of mine or whatever, because they just think, well, we disagree, and I'm just turning around and saying, well, I'm sorry, but I've looked through the history of this, and that's why I feel very passionate about it. Okay, we're, we're kind of coming up on an hour here. I like to leave things on a light note, mm -hmm. and seeing that you're over on the other side of the pond, and we have a lot of American watchers and viewers and everything, what did you have for breakfast today? <laughs> And what did I have for breakfast today? I had bran flakes today. I should have had porridge, which is much better for my health. But I had bran, bran flakes today, right? That is what I what I had. And no no pastry, no nothing. It's a cereal. It's a cereal uh -huh. that comes out of a packet. <laughs> what is what would you call a say a normal British or UK breakfast or you know yeah. a Londoner's breakfast? <laughs> Oh, it all depends maybe what part of uh, London you're, you're living, maybe part of your income and all this kind of thing, and whether you're some kind of yuppie that wants to go out and uh, uh, go and have multiple bagels and uh, umpteen cups of coffee in a local restaurant. Um, for me, I'd just say cereal, toast, and, uh, and I'm not saying that's good for me, um, and... Uh, a cup of green tea which is which is good which is good for me i mm -hmm. i try and stay away from the coffee frankly okay. i know that you you guys on your side of the pond coffee is is the thing you know no I, that's that's rather small um no, um it suddenly uh, i don't know why but i suddenly wanted to shout you, you know you can't be serious for some and maybe i was going through my poor begging vaccination um but but yeah no that's it that's the light note what is what's the other light question well i was just i was just you know you always see pictures of of all these brits having you know like eggs and sausage and black pudding yeah. and these yeah. beans and I mean, I'm sure I'm sure that I'm sure that people do doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that it's good for you. You know, I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. I love, you know, fried eggs or whatever or sausages. But I think, um, yeah, maybe more people are watching what they're, what they're actually eating and all the rest. Yeah. OK, next question is, while you were over here in the States, what was your favorite food? Or what, what, yeah, what was your favorite food or what was your favorite restaurant or, or anything that in your short visits that you experienced here? Um, I loved it when we went out to that Mexican restaurant. That yeah. was good. I love that. Um, I mean, I'm, my, I'm mindful of, uh, you know, diabetes and all that. It's a big issue. So I am mindful of. But, I mean, the breakfast at the hotel is great, but I'm just mindful of not stuffing myself with this pastry or that pastry and trying to stick uh, uh, to fruit and all the rest that is actually good good for me, trying to take out the, sh the sugar issues. Um, but I did love it when, I mean, any to, to escape the hotel, which is great, but to actually go out to a restaurant like that and be amongst the local the culture, local culture. Um, amidst, <laughs> amidst Texas, uh, I love it. Um, yeah. I feel very much at home there. So I, I really, I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, I really appreciate Mark coming on board here and us spending a good amount of time just talking about what's going on on the other side of the pond. Some of this stuff we may not understand, but some of this stuff is critical to us and what's happening over there does affect us over here. And, and we are seeing a global push 
And even though here in America we have voted for certain things, and over in England they have voted for certain things, we are still seeing the powers that be are pushing for their way. It doesn't matter what the voice of the people say, it's their way or almost the highway. And so it's very interesting, and I just want to thank Mark so much for coming on board and, and spending time with us and everything. Do me a favor, Mark. <laughs> this is five dogs actually seven dogs right now because we're visiting our, our son's dogs are staying with us for a moment <laughs> sorry i shouldn't laugh but that that's the reality that's the reality of life yeah. <laughs> bro gosh that's brilliant but thank you right it's been lovely um, do me a favor shut up bonnie <laughs> bonnie <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm in hysterics. <laughs> Can we add that as an outtake? <laughs> yeah, really. That'll be part of the blooper reel. Yeah. Um, do me a favor. Tell people how people can contact you. Tell them a little about your production company. Um, we didn't get a chance to even talk about any of your movies. Well, that uh, that is, yeah. Thank you. If you if you go on YouTube um, and you look up uh, a little short film called Between Lambs and Lions, I will be very grateful. I'll be very grateful if you if you look it up and share it. It depicts the time when the Constitution has been suspended and there's complete overreach by the executive branch and the Star Spangled Banner banned from being sung and the whole thing assigned to a museum. Sometimes art, art reflects uh, what's happening uh, in, uh, in real life. Um, so go on there and... Um, I have, uh, there is a YouTube channel, Creative Hub Productions Limited. Find that. Um, and yeah, no, that, I'd just be uh, really, really grateful for that. Find the film and and share it. We do have another film coming out, uh, maybe September or maybe a little bit later, um, which is about uh, communism, a drama. So which uh, will be loved by the americans over there um and hopefully wake up a few uh, a few people over here but please no share the film it's something that i'd love to make into a feature film but uh, all these things uh, um demand money but that'd be that'd be great thank you ray do you have any other projects coming up or anything i we were talking a little bit and i want to encourage you uh are you going to start a youtube channel or anything here soon yeah, I've got, I've got to. We've got to start broadcasting. We've got to start interviewing people on your side of the pond. We've got to interview a number of people on 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 this side of the pond. Channels there. Just got to do it. Part of. Um, I mean, I'm in my office now. There is a studio bit that I've got to finish over there, but I can still broadcast here. Um, and Ray and I'm very grateful for our conversation last night, where you're encouraging us to do, encouraging me to do that. We need each other. You know, we need each other um, like no other time. You know, we joke about 1776. We joke about that. But actually, and we joke about, you know, or politicians go on about a special relationship. I feel that I have a special relationship with you guys because over the last two years, having flown in twice and then regularly having the privilege to have these conversations, these interviews and others, we desperately need each other. We need we need to be praying for you. We desperately need your prayers over here. But but an understanding, you know, spiritual warfare, and I know that's where you come in, Ray, and in regard to your teaching and your ministry. And it's, you know, I just urge people to look up Win Worley as well and Frank Frank Hammond. And if people can pray that thing, you know, that um, cultural Marxism, the spirit of that is bound, common purpose is bound in 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 Jesus' name, and to encourage um, people to be praying and engaging for your midterms it's not i say it respectfully it's not something that people should be taking for granted um this battle is raging and i've got into trouble on your side of the pond because i've said that a few times just because president trump is is in you know um the everyone thinks we can all sit back and everything is going to be fine you know we thought that with brexit it is not fine you are you're needing prayer to drain the swamp we're needing prayer to drain our swamp well again i just i thank you so much and everything but, uh, <laughs> folks i just want to thank you so much for joining us today this is ani 
Yeah. And yeah. I'm Ray, and <laughs> that's Mark. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. This is Ray Gain of PZ TV. Do me a favor and hit that red subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. Hit that little bell so you know when I'm going to put up a new video and everything. And do me a favor, too, is make some comments below. Tell me what you think about our interview today with Mark. Tell us about what you thought about what's going over there in England, what's going on over in the United States. And then also, is there anybody else that you would like us to interview? Anybody over on the other side of the pond that I can contact with? So, again, subscribe, thumbs up, comment, and hit that little bell. So, from us here at PZTV, thank you so much. Goodbye. God bless. And Mary Hopkins.